And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Get ready, because it's spring training time right here in Arizona. And we are looking at, in the future, the year 2045. We're looking at Baseball Highlights 2045 from Eagle Griffin Games, designed by uh, proclaimed card game designer Mike Fitzgerald. This is for one to four players, plays at 45 to 60 minutes. It is a deck building game. If you're not a fan of baseball, don't shut this off yet. You're gonna wanna hear my final results and see how you play this game because it doesn't really even feel like baseball. And yet for those people that like baseball, it does. Let's take a look. I first want to show you the box here. We've got some cards that came with the base game, and I want you to know that uh, they put a lot of thought into this because, you know, they actually fit really tightly in some of the slots like that, but you can see that some of the other slots are wider, and that's so that they can fit in their sleeve, which is very smart, and obviously they left a lot here uh, for expansions. At the beginning of the game, you pick one of four teams, and you get a 15-man roster, which is your starter deck. Now here you have 10 rookie cards and five veterans. Now the 10 rookie cards are exactly the same no matter which team you pick. So we've got San Francisco, we've got Boston, you've got LA, and you've got New York. And those are the colors, obviously, of those teams. And so each of these starter decks will have 10 of these same rookie cards, five veterans. Now the veterans are slightly different from team to team. Um, but that's pretty much it. You get a starter deck and you start the game. So here we have a two player game set up. We have a bunch of runners in the middle here. Each player has a board and some, uh, each player gets one player aid. And the player aids just tell you a little bit about the base runners, how they run, and all the different uh, special ability cards and what they do in more detail. And in your board, you see Boston. Here's the visitor team. If I was home, I'd flip this over. This keeps track of the runs scored in each game. This tells you how many games in the World Series you've won. These are the cards that you're going to be playing. Of course, we have an on-deck circle in your dugout. So we take that 15-man roster that you started with, you shuffle your deck up, and you've got your lineup, and you drop six cards, because this game, it's one card per inning, and there's six inning mini games. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We pull these cards up, and the first thing we're going to do is kind of decide on a guy that we may want to put on deck. I'll tell you why you would do something like this later, but you can secretly pick somebody to go on deck here. You can look at this guy at any time during the game, but now I drop back up and I have six cards and I've got someone special here on deck that we can bring out a little bit later in the game. We'll talk about that later. Let's talk about how a turn in the game flows. Now there's three different types of sort of factions or types of players in this game. There's robots, cyborgs, and naturals. The naturals are really good at defense. They help you do things like cancel hits, but they don't really do any hits or threaten any hits a lot of the time. Cyborgs are very good at defense. They change all hits to walks, for example, in this case. But again, they don't always ha have very good offense either. And then you have robots who aren't very good defensively, but they can hit the ball very well. Those, in general, those are the three different types of uh, sort of players that you have, and they have different abilities as well. But essentially what you're gonna do is on your turn, you're gonna take one card and you're gonna put it in play. So let's say I pick this guy, put it in play. The first thing you do, this is a back and forth sort of ping pong match, the flow of this game. The first thing you do is you would, you would resolve anything that's in this what they call an immediate action box for example if there was something there you would you would do that next we would then resolve any hits that the other player is playing in this case it's the first card of the first game so nothing really happens except what we're doing is we are uh, we are threatening a single and we're doing an average runner which is blue so we would take one runner and we would put him here and we're say basically we tell our opponent we're threatening an average single we'll talk about slow average and fast and what that means in just a moment so the next player, the defense, the other player plays his card. Again, first thing you do is the immediate action box, if there is one. Glove, cancel one hit. So what that does is that canceled my threatened hit. So in this case, boom, we would resolve this and this would, he would come off and he just comes off the board because he was basically, that hit was canceled. And he would also threaten a sing, an average running single. Well, I play this card next as Boston. No immediate action happens. And since no immediate action happened, for example, I didn't cancel his hit, his single actually happens and he has a guy on first base. Now I'm threatening an average double, so I put a blue runner at home plate and I'm threatening that to my, my opponent's next card. Well, he plays this, no immediate action is there, so now we resolve my hit. My double happened, so boom, boom, this guy is on second. 
he's threatening an average running single. Now I play a card here, pick off, remove one base runner. So we immediately pick off one of his runners. So we pick off this runner, but this hit happened. So this guy that was threatening is now on first. Now I wasn't threatening anybody here. There's nothing threatening. So now it becomes the other player's turn. He plays this one. Ooh, look at this. Now these, these actions, these immediate actions, if they're green and have an O, they're offensive. If they're red and have a D, they're defensive. This is quick eye. It's an automatic single if versus a cyborg. Oh, and look at this. The last card I played was a cyborg card, a good pitcher. So he planned that right. So he gets an automatic single. So first of all, a single would happen. Boom. And uh, then he's threatening a slow double. So now's a good time to talk about how these runners move. So we have slow, which is white, signified by the white S. Uh, the average, which is a blue A and fast, which are red Fs. So how do these runners move? Once they're on base, if someone after them gets a hit, it tells them how far they go. Slow guys, no matter what, if there's, uh, let's just say there's a slow guy here. If there's a single, that's one base, he moves one. If it's a double, he moves two. So he moves the amount of bases that's there. If he's here and it's a double, he moves two. If it's here and it's a triple, he moves three. One, two, three, because he moves exactly however many bases the person behind him hit. Assuming that he can actually move and there's not people in front of him stopping and things like that. That usually happens for the faster runners, actually. Now, the average runners, they have the same exact rules, except when a runner is on second, a single, instead of just normally moving them one, a single moves them home like that but that's an average runner. Now the fast runners move one more base than normal. So if somebody hits a single and he's on first, instead of just moving here, he moves an additional one. So he goes from first to third on a single. And that's how the different runners move. So this guy's now threatening a slow double with a guy on second. So I play, boom, walk. It's a cyborg change, all hits to walks. And that's huge, because that would have scored this guy if it had happened, but now this guy just walks. This guy doesn't move anywhere, because there was nobody on first base. If there was somebody on first base and the walk happened, then all these guys would have walked and we would have been here. But in this case, we're like this. Now if I did, and obviously this guy didn't have any threatened hits, so it goes back to the next player to play a card. All right, this guy has no immediate action. And I hadn't threatened anything, so nothing happens on my side. He's threatening an average home run. Oof, he's threatening a three-run homer. How do I stop that home run? Let's see, I, I don't have anything to stop it with this card. I don't have anything to stop it with this card. It's my only two cards left. What am I going to do? Well, one of these cards has a pinch hit. On a card that has a pinch hitter, I can essentially say I'm pinch hitting. He then goes to my dugout, face up, immediately. Now, I can either choose to use my on-deck guy to pinch hit, which I know I can look at this anytime, or I can randomly take a guy off the top. Well, I know that I had a defensive guy on deck, and it cancels one hit, and he threatens an average single. Ha-ha! So, his home run is gone. Now, that player then plays. Oh, double play. Remove up to two base runners that aren't fast, and we're going to threaten a average single single. Well, the good news is, is, you know, he, he had a double play. He removed the player. So boom, there goes that, but he didn't stop this single. So at least that happened. And then I have my card here, no immediate action, which means the single happens. Now, again, a single means this guy average scores from home. So I like to put the guy there cause he scored, put him on how much this guy got a single and this guy got a single. And so I'm threatening my single. And the home team plays his last card, which is threatening an average triple. Now, he did not have anything that stopped mine. So my single did happen, but I was the visitor. Now, I just got guys here and I got zero runs. He actually was at one. So he was up one to nothing, and that's that. That would be the end of the game. He would have won one to nothing. Now, there is a thing called visitor save. Let's say that we were actually tied, or maybe I was up two to one, and he was threatening his triple, which would have made him win the game at the end of the game. I could have either at that point used my on deck card for only the immediate action. Just a defensive immediate action basically would have happened there. Uh, uh, or the immediate, just the immediate action would have, act, would have happened no matter what it was. Or in this case, I don't have anybody. 
So I would have just flipped this over, hoping that there was a defensive action. In this case, there wasn't, but a lot of times, sometimes it will. Sometimes you'll pull one up and it will be, ooh, look at that, cancel hit. That would have canceled that hit. So sometimes you can save the game at the end of the day. It's like the home team's up to play and the visitor's out in the field and they get the one last card to try to stop them. That's essentially how a mini game win happens. So at the end of the game, we take all these, these cards that are here. We see how much money revenue they created. So that's one, two, four, zero, five, seven, Eight, ten. I have ten dollars to spend to add free agents. We would compare my ten dollars to the other team. The, the player that has the least uh, amount of money gets to decide who buys first. If it's tied, the loser gets to decide. So here we have different things. The red is the cost. So we have six, ten, eight, and below that is the money that it will generate uh, on, once they're on your team. Now again, we have cyborgs, robots, and naturals, and we see different cards here. So like the, the cyborg. Yeah, he's, he cancels all hits versus any naturals, and he does a single. This guy, 5 2 model, wow, he costs 10, which I could buy just him. But he only provides one income next round, and when he's played, clutch single. So if there's a runner on second or third, an automatic single happens, and he threatens three fast singles, which is, wow, really powerful card. Now, all the naturals have cool names, like Mickey Maris. They take <coughs> a... First player of one, uh, 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 a player of one first name and a player of a last name, and they kind of put them together. It's really, really makes this game a lot of fun. So essentially, you would buy however many cards you can afford. Let's say I just take this guy, and I would add it right to the top of my deck because at the beginning of the next round, I'm going to draw my six next cards and play. Now, if there's not enough cards to draw, then I take all the guys that were played in the previous games that are now in my dugout, and I shuffle them up and I draw them up. Because, so, so now you know the play that people are taking that round are gonna be in the game. Now, after I'm completely done buying, a new card would come out for the other player. And let's say that player has enough to buy these two players, he puts them on top of his deck, and for next round, these two guys would come out. Ooh, Barry Sosa. So let me show you some of these cards. Here's the ones that have the cool names, like CC Clemens, Catfish Carlton, Satchel Seaver, Pee Wee Rizzuto, Hideo Tanaka, Max Verlander, Troy Jeter, Dizzy Drysdale, Barry Sosa. Look at him, he threatens two home runs. So that really makes the game a lot of fun the way that this is, uh, all, all those characters are in here. So we had just played one mini game. You'd play two more. You'd have a buy round between each of them where you're putting those free agents. Now I must say that after you get those free agents, for every free agent you bought, you have to pick one person from the six players that you played in that round, and you decide which one to put under here as the minor leagues. He is now gone for the whole game. So essentially, however many cards you add, that's how many cards you throw in your minors, because you always keep a 15-man roster through the whole game. And so after you have this, um, you play those three mini games and a buy round between each one, and then you start the World Series, and with the two-player game, uh, after every World Series game, you also have a buy round. So if you went seven games, whoever wins four games first in the World Series wins, just like in real baseball. So you could have a maximum of seven World Series games and three uh, mini games. So you could have 10 buy rounds by the time you're done there. And that's pretty much the basics of how you play Baseball Highlights 2045. Mike Fitzgerald is a genius. I think he has come across a holy grail here, and this is why. I love baseball. I've never played an actual game that felt like baseball, but at the same time didn't because it was very interesting. They took out, he took out all of the parts of baseball that are boring and kept in all the exciting, good decision-making. You actually feel like you're a manager, a bench coach, saying which player's gonna hit when, do what, which player are you gonna bring in to do the relief guy on this guy, match up a lefty versus lefty and all that sort of stuff. You actually feel like a manager in this game. And I think he hit the, the holy grail here because for me as a baseball fan, this game is absolutely amazing. I am so impressed with it. But the reason why it's really a good holy grail is because I've played this game with people who are not really fans of baseball. Sure, they understand the basics of how baseball works because that's all you need to know here, just the basics. Uh, and you can learn them really quick if you don't. And my buddies that play this game that aren't really into baseball, they loved it too. And that's why I think this is the holy grail because it appeals to both baseball fans and non-baseball fans because it's an excellent game. The game's just so thematic. The fast runners, wow, they move from first to third on a single. The average runners score from second on a, on, on a single. So thematic. Oh, these guys get picked off, but uh, oh, these guys, you know, these guys aren't going to be affected if they're fast runners. Totally thematic. I feel like the cards are thematic. It's so cool they broke them up into the three different factions, the naturals, the robots, 
<laughs> the, you know, the, uh, the cyborgs that are good pitchers. And I love the names on the cards. Gosh, if you're any fan of baseball here, you're going to go nuts because you're going to try to be figuring out which players they, they must to match together. And that really adds a huge amount of fun to this game. Mechanically, the game is so fun. It takes, it does take a little bit just to get your head wrapped around to the play where you play a card and you do something with the immediate action. Then it resolves the other player's hits. Then you threaten your hits. And it's a ping pong action. You play a card, it goes boop, boop, boop. Next player plays a card, boop, boop, boop. And it goes back and forth. And it takes like a good game or two to just really kind of get to the flow of it and get to the action. But once you got the flow down, man, it just smooth sailing and it, and it runs really smooth. I am just so impressed with how well this game played and how fun it is and how much it really feels like you're managing a team. Okay, I gotta tell you, I do not even own one deck builder in my entire collection. I don't because I've never found one that I really like. This is the first one that I've ever played that I was just like, oh, I like this, this is amazing. Really impressed with the solo version. I'm not a big solo gamer, but I tried it out and it's, it's, it's almost impeccable how you can randomly be pulling cards from a strong team that's, that's an opponent. For some reason, he always has the right cards to play against you and it's still very tight. That's another thing. I love how when you're building your team, oh, well, I'm gonna go for offense. I'm gonna start buying all the robots. Well, that guy's gonna start buying all the cyborgs that cancel hits against robots. And you can go, okay, am I gonna go for speed and defense? Maybe pitching and defense, maybe offensive and speed. You pick a couple things and you go for that strategy and you're kind of building that up over the game. And I love that about this. And it's amazing that even if you take two completely different strategies from, from you and your opponent, the games are, most of the games are so tight, or at least the series is tight. Maybe you have a good draw and you just kill them like five to nothing. But then the next game, you're probably gonna have a weaker hand, he's gonna have a stronger hand, at least the series is battle, battled. So usually either the games are balanced or the series is balanced. You could tell that Mike spent a lot of time thinking and balancing how this game works, because I was so impressed with how balanced, even when I play against players that haven't played before, wow, it's still, I don't totally crush them. Sure, I have a leg up on them, I kinda understand the cards a little better, Whew, this game, I am so impressed. The, uh, Mike, uh, you know, his D Diamonds game was my pick of the year for card game of the year last year. And this is in the front running, I think, for me already. And it's early, I know. But wow, this game's amazing. If you don't like baseball and you like deck builders, check this one out. You might be very surprised. If you like baseball, no brainer. You got to check this out. Wow, even the three player game. Now, Two and f the four player tournament, oh man, you can have tournaments with this, you can have multiple games and run bigger tournaments with eight players, uh, eight teams, awesome. And then if you've got four people coming over and one doesn't show up, or you've got one person supposed to be showing up and two show up, you can still play this with three players. Granted, I wouldn't recommend it for a first time player because the flow gets even more confusing, but just the fact that he thought about how to balance a game with three players playing baseball, sure, I like two player better, but you can still play it and it works. Unbelievable, solo game. Two player, four player, three player, it all works. Unbelievable game. This is one of my favorite, it is my favorite card game. This thing is the best. Check out Baseball Highlights 2045. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.